Welcome to my Zoom. We have uh, Miss Mating, who is the Miss Manipur 2019, uh, Miss Para winner 2019, and Miss Good second runner up 2019. She's the uh, first person, the only person who have won this title back to back uh, in a particular calendar year. And also, she was the second runner up in 2013, Miss Orange. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much, Mating, for coming to my Zoom. Um, the first question is, uh, tell us what have changed after winning these titles for you? Okay. Uh, a lot has changed and a lot of people have already noticed me. And of course, that's because uh, I've put myself in a position where people are to be noticed. Uh, sorry, I am to be noticed in the crowd. And mm -hmm. yes, um, a lot of good Changes has come along the way. I have got uh, a lot of good opportunities and I'm, I'm grateful and glad for that. Okay, of all the things that happen, uh, particularly after winning the title, uh, can you name some of the best things that you would say that, yes, this is something that you really wish for that it happened to you? I have always uh, wanted to help people around me and especially in my my community and um, that only happened after winning this crown because I have always been since childhood uh, traveling from uh, states to other states and places to places because of my dad's work so I could never spend my uh, childhood or my teenage out here uh, in Manipur so after coming down to Manipur uh, and then uh, getting to participate and finally settling down here, I could actually help our own people. And uh, that has been my greatest achievement. Yeah, I think that's well reflected in many of the initiatives that you're associated with. And I think one of the more uh, recent one, which we uh, got to see is the uh, vocal for locals. Uh, can you throw yeah. some light on that one? All right. So uh, this is um, an idea and a proposal that uh, Mashumi came up with. And he actually visited my place one day and mm -hmm. uh, we were just discussing. And he said, I'm actually trying to initiate something uh, which is called Vocal for Local. So mm -hmm. how about you be a part of it as well? And yeah. um, I gave a thought of it and I said, yes, why not? Because uh, it is a really good uh, platform and what we are doing it here is we are a non-profitable NGO or organization uh, you mm -hmm. can say and we give platform to all these upcoming young entrepreneurs and uh, anyone who is into business or who is trying to you know make some earnings uh, which is very hard in this mm -hmm. uh, pandemic as we all know so we have just tried to arrange a platform where everyone can come and display their, uh, you know, uh, talents, whether it be art, singing, or um, if you have uh, interest in plants or pottery, whatever you have, you, your talent, you can just mm. bring it and you can sell it there. And the people who are interested, they will come and buy it. So this is the platform that we have created. And I think... Um, I'm actually really happy to be a part of it because I think we are actually, um, uh, we, ha we have had actually successful continuous for Friday markets and mm. uh, the outcome has been really good because in a day, it just the first Friday itself, we, the total sell of the, that, that day specific was uh, almost around three lakhs, uh, okay. which is a very big money generation and the last Friday it was uh, two lakhs and 50,000 so yeah I think this is a platform where uh, people coming back home and who don't know what to do and uh, who don't have any earnings it's a platform for them to earn some money and yeah that's it uh, nice to hear about that and then uh, uh, getting to hear about the response uh, for the last four Fridays uh, it's encouraging to yeah. see that but uh, uh, what would be the way forward to, you know, uh, ensure sustainability and to have a relative promotion? 
All right. Um, so I think uh, it's, it's a really good platform, first of all. And um, I would like to mention that our people is um, very talented and uh, we have somehow lost the track of our talents. Um, so this platform has actually helped a lot of people, younger generations, and of course the older ones also, to, yeah. to you know, re repolish their talents and come up with their products and sell it on Friday. And what happened, what has happened is, you get more demands in the market. You sold out in Friday and then people are actually taking your personal numbers for the entrepreneurs I'm talking. So they are taking their personal numbers as well and then uh, they are making calls and they are demanding uh, the products. So this is a beginning, I think, yeah, um, yeah. where you, you can learn about how to do your business properly and uh, expand your um, market. So yeah. now it was just Friday market and mm -hmm. it has turned into something that now you can sell it in, um, in your own locality convenience stores because yeah. there's a demand for it. Yeah. And slowly, I think it's going to turn into something where you will be exporting your products out of Ukru and sell it in Infal. And maybe... Yeah. It, it might take time, say, five years to 10 years, but I think if, if, if it's a really good product, then it will sell out of Manipur as well. So I think this is a, a small initiative from our side, but a boost also where all these uh, local entrepreneurs who are scared, what if their product doesn't work out or what if, mm -hmm. it, if it becomes a failure project? So they can explore, they can start with a very small amount of their own product and then uh, come and sell it in the Friday market. And if it, if it works, it's going to bloom for them. So this is, I think, a really good step. And then this is going to help a lot of younger entrepreneurs in our uh, locality, in our society to, yeah, uh, flourish and form in this field further. And uh, one thing that I would like to, like, you know, ask is that how do you strike the balance between, you know, uh, your glamour side and then because engaging in this kind of work would repute you to soil your hand as well. So, like, uh, for you, how do yeah. you strike those balance? <laughs> uh, I don't know how do I maintain it, but I think... I should thank my uh, vocal for local team. They are actually very quiet, uh, very understanding and they have been very patient with me. So times when I cannot uh, attend the meeting or be a part of the discussion, they always fill me in. And um, I think that's, that's, that's the great part of uh, working with a team, which is very mm -hmm. understanding and who understands the value of other person's time. Um, yeah. yeah. So that's how I've uh, managed to actually uh, work out with my glamorous world and uh, this side of the um, uh, world. And the other thing is, um, actually, me and my friends have also opened up some stalls for just for some uh, fundraise and um, mm -hmm some donations to give to an orphanage and we would not like to mention which orphanage we would be giving uh, out the fund because that's something we want to keep it secret but yes um we have been quite successful because of friday market also and i think um, it's it's all thanks to vocal for local um, glamorous part has and will always be a part of me but uh, i think that is something uh work-related and this vocal for local is something which I'm very passionate about. Um, so I think when uh, you can separate your professional work and your passion, then yeah, yeah, it goes hand in hand. Yeah, uh, 2019 was one, uh, I would say a very successful year for you, uh, particularly in the profession yes. you chose to pursue, but 2020, uh, it brings a full stop. I mean, to all to all of us, but uh, like 2021 now beginning to open up again. So like for you in the days to come and particularly for 2022, um, what are some of your 
plans and your aspirations that like would you like to share some okay uh 2000 yes uh, 2019 has been a really great year i should say and um, i thank god and my parents for that for being so supportive and uh, being there uh, for me throughout mm, for 2021 20 and 22 all these years after uh, winning the crown um, Sadly, uh, the COVID-19 hit um, on March 2020. So from there, work has been, um, you know, on pause and not just for me, but uh, for the entire world. And only now I think uh, things are getting a little better and we're, we're coping up with it and um, we have uh, managed to survive. So during this time, I have actually uh, picked picked up the hobby, which is uh, just making some beverages, uh, mm -hmm. local indigenous product. So, because I, I, I'm I glad that I am born in Ukrul and then um, I'm from Manipur. Uh, we have abundance of, uh, you know, indigenous fruits. So when, you, when we talk about plum or there's wild apple, there's olive, mm -hmm gooseberries a lot of it is like already here and it's in abundance so yeah. me and my mom would always pluck it and uh, buy it from uh, sellers and we like making juice out of it and um, mm -hmm. that's what my mom has taught me in this past uh, couple of years and yeah I'm actually exploring my field there so I am um yeah, I'm into now. I'm actually interested into uh, wineries. So mm -hmm. yes, um, by 2000 this year, 2020, 21 November, I'll be coming up with my own brand. Um, oh. So yes, I am very much working hard on that and looking forward to it to be a successful one. <laughs> That's great to know. Yeah, hope uh, we'll we'll have to taste that uh, soon. And wishing you all the very best. And uh, that's yeah, so nice to hear about that. I would love that. to yeah. send some to you. Thank you. Yeah, surely, surely. Can you share some of your, like, you know, uh, desire, which you would like to, you know, uh, what do you call it? Uh, fight for? Or would you like to influence certain things that would bring some change for our community, for our people, uh, you know? So, so, something that you are really passionate about or you would like to really pursue or help influence certain policies anything like that okay yes uh actually there are a lot of things but um coming back here i have uh, noticed quite a lot of uh negative side of our society as well so one thing now that i am in the limelight uh, not that I'm so popular or anything, but then people know. And then I've put myself there. I have came to realize that there are a lot of people as, as well, um, not just from the glamorous world, from uh, but uh, say be it political issues or be it someone who is a public figure. So mm. I actually want to be an you know example. Uh, hopes. I want to be someone who is um, very genuine and then, um, how do I put it? Uh, someone who's not greedy and who's not into money because mm. when you are doing a social work, it's for the people that you're doing, uh, not, yeah. not for yourself. So if, if you're doing it for yourself, then I think um, you should do something that is uh, your own and mm. uh, your, for your personal use and which is from your own personal uh, pocket. But if you are standing in a public, public, uh, this thing, uh, public stage and being leading a public or leading a society, then I think uh, you have to be very genuine and you have to be true to yourself. And, yeah. uh, you know, like I said, not being greedy and not being selfish because yeah. you are there to serve people around you. Uh, in your area so 
it's 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 not a good thing if if you are supposed to give something or someone has donated something for the people and you are taking it in for yourself so that is something i'm really passionate and um, i'm really into right now um i really want to make a change make a difference on that side of the world uh, other than that i would really want to encourage our younger ones or people my age each or older than me um who are just out there sitting idly and also because of this lockdown i think uh, most of mm-hmm. us have become uh, quite jobless and then we don't have any earnings so i would like to encourage them to find a hobby and uh, start with that because mm-hmm. i think um no job is small so you just have to start at the end of the day i truly believe that nobody is going to feed you uh, nobody is going to pamper you your parents won't be there for you for long and some day when you grow older you have to be the one looking after them so it's all right if you do the smallest job and people make fun of you because they are not the ones feeding you for yourself so you have to own own up to it and work as hard as you can and just earn it yeah that leads me to one question i have in mind um one thing is that many of us we understand that we don't get paid uh what we are worth so what is your thought on that all right um i think uh, the beginning of this entertainment industry has been uh, quite our older generations i should say uh, i'm not talking about the generations right now because um, i think a lot of things has changed now but what has happened then has certainly impacted and then has reflected uh, now because there has been a tradition that has been going on uh, uh, we can see a trend that has been going on and i think it's just not in uh, ukru or manipur itself but um in the whole northeast so uh, the first of all is uh, artists being called and uh, not getting paid um mm. a lot has a lot of time it has happened to me as well and uh, that has been quite amusing because i have had been working in delhi for two years as a as a part time model and whenever i went um, and worked they have always paid me and i never had to talk about it. but here people call you and they expect you to do it for free and uh, they would pay you up uh that's the that's the i think that's where everything has started so as an artist uh, be it singer or be it a host or anchor mm. just because you are called to you know uh, please be the host of this program does not mean that they, you should not get paid because yeah if you go outside and then ask someone to host a program they will never come for free and uh, yes uh, i should say that um, the price point or the charges for every artist is different uh, because of course um, not every artist has the same level of fame or same level of uh, how do i say popularity or yeah the values so you have to understand the value of each and every artist and i think the payment has to be done accordingly and um it's it's very bad to set a specific price point for every artist uh, that yes. is in same category i think that is very rude of our people to do that or for the people who are actually hiring artists what they need to do is when you are talking about uh, business or when you are talking about deals you need to firmly ask how much will you charge or yeah. as an artist as an artist itself i think uh, one has to be very firm enough to say this is my charge um, this is going to be my fees if you can afford me that's fine if you cannot afford me that is also okay or if yeah. you want to negotiate uh, i'm willing to do that that is yeah. something i think uh, people has to be very vocal about 
out, especially the artists, because mm. I think um, our people would not do that and yeah. they don't understand. And uh, when, when the artist tries to talk about it, when they talk about it, the people who are trying to hire them, they say, oh, they have got a lot of ego and um, they're being so pricey and all. But I think, you know, um, I, just, I just want to say talent does not come for free. Yeah. And if you think that you can do that, then why call artists? You just do it by yourself, right? Yeah. Yeah. So that is something I really want to uh, highlight on that. And uh, one face that I have always uh, came across when people come to me, that is, um, uh, you know, uh, like, please uh, help us out, no? Uh, in Tangkul, they say... Uh, so they're like, yeah. uh, help, help out our own people. Like, let's help each other out. They're yes. saying that. So, and they expect me to come and uh, do their work for them and not pay up. So I just want to point out, if you are saying, let's help out each other, then how are you helping me back? Because yeah. um at this point, people already know me and then yeah. I'm not bragging or I'm not being very uh, pricey right now, but just being very practical. Uh, people yeah. already know me and I don't need to go around functions and programs uh, just for another acknowledgement or, uh, you know, public appearance. Um, yeah. So how are you helping me? Because this is something I am doing for my, you know, uh, uh, for my my own for my own survival this is my uh, yeah. sole bread earning so if you yeah. snatch that away from me and say help us out we are your own people we, we need to help each other out then okay i come and help you out how are you helping me in return um so negotiation <laughs> when it comes to talking uh, deals and terms i think people should really um uh know what they are talking and be reasonable about it yeah one thing is yeah. like uh like we don't sign a contract agreement. Uh, do you think these things will help? It would. It would usually help, actually. Yes. Uh, what you're saying is very true. Signing a contract is something very important when you set a deal. But <clears throat> when it's done mutually, then I don't think you need a contract. But, you know, mm, when yeah, uh, yeah. I used to sign contracts out uh, there in Delhi, uh, we would actually sign contracts and um, sometimes they would pay up 60% in advance and they would pay up 40% after the work. So, yeah, if, if that can happen out here, then I think uh, it would be really nice. And then our artists can actually explore and perform better. And, um, yeah, for a, in this field, out of Manipur as well. Because then things are done here professionally. Uh, my last question, because election is very near now. And uh, yeah. <laughs> um, what's your take on uh, politics? Particularly, uh, what kind of message would you like to convey, uh, you know, participating in politics? Mm, I'm actually quite interested in uh, politics with because this is something where we decide our future and we mold them because if we don't choose the right leader, I don't think we would have a very successful or <clears throat> uh, good structure of a future. So uh, for politics, I won't say much. I don't have any specific uh, preferences on which side to go, but I love politics and I'm quite into it. And one thing I would like to say is uh, please vote. And I'm also the state ambassador for election commission. So oh. um, I'd like to say, uh, yeah. <laughs> so I would like to say, please choose your vote wisely. And um, before, before voting anyone or any, uh, you know, standing candidate, I think uh, it is very, it would be very wise of you to do a thorough survey uh, of his background and uh, his profile of what he has done for the society and how has it changed the and shaped our society for better for in a positive way. And um, I think that's how you should choose a leader because um, someone who has done positive work and who has uh, showed a lot of positive effort in, in, in the past would definitely do much, much better 
in the future if that person is uh, elected as our MLA or our uh, minister or our council uh, member. So yes, uh, choose your vote wisely. That's what I, I think, would like to say. I think I, I asked this question to the <laughs> right person. <laughs> I knew that uh, you are the ambassador for <laughs> the, yeah. Oh, that's amazing. Yes, Mating, uh, thank you so very much thank for you. coming to Mesum. Um, we have talked uh, at length various topics. Um, thank you so very much coming to Mesum and talking to me. Thank you for having uh, me. It was nice yeah. being a part of Mesum. And all the very best for your future endeavor. Yeah, thank you.